uh, perhaps the, the, the you know if we want really to start from the very beginning it was uh, it was and i checked today the date it was april 24th now we are in april uh 25th i'm sorry i think 25th uh 1984 that the new school had this large right event convocation you know which really was about human rights right chef there were various it was nothing to do with the beginning or ending of academic year which normally this is where we have events like that it was frankly in the spring it was in the spring it was late spring but you know at least a month before the end of academic year that the the new school decided to to give honorary degree to this prisoner political prisoner in poland and that was my thing. So, so, so in fact, uh, uh, um, it was uh, the new school commemorating the 50th anniversary anniversary of the university in exile. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. so, so that, that 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 was it was a special event to do that, and um, along with Mithnik, um depending how you count, five or six other human rights activists from around the world were um, 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 kind of honored to commemorate. From Latin America, the, from, the, the from, women from, from uh, right, Plaza right. de Mayo, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, no, it was the- the, uh, oh, the nuns. Uh, the, the Dominican nuns. Dominican nuns, in, the in, in, women in, got it later. As yeah. I recall in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. uh, I've written about this recently uh, uh, in a piece where I uh, I wrote about Adam Michnik, but also C.T. Vivian. So C.T. Vivian was um, uh, a, a civil rights leader in uh, the United States who recently, not too long ago, died, and his posthumous uh, memoir ha ha is being published right now. And uh, so I wrote an essay kind of remembering Michnik, but also C.T. Vivian as a way of connecting um, the, the struggle for uh, a free public life, which is central to uh, Michnik's project uh, with the struggle for social justice, which is, was uh, central to C.T. Vivian's uh, uh, project. So, so it was uh, those three uh, uh, plus, um, um, Helen Sussman uh, mm -hmm. from South Africa. Right. I'm not going to remember everyone, and um, I'm forgetting the name of it uh, of the guy, uh, a Russian uh, human rights activist as well. Um, am I forgetting anyone? But anyway, that th th there was this group that commemorated the uh, uh, 50th anniversary of the New School uh, of the University in Exile. Now. And I remember as, as I wasn't it there. happened. Mm -hmm. you I wasn't there because I wasn't there because I was teaching at Bart and I came late that evening. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and I met, you know, I to, to, to so so I saw Miwash, I talked to him and so on, but it was already after that happened. And later on I saw many pictures and and I believed that I was there because that I saw the pictures, but I just re recently realized that I, I had to take this train from right. because you, on the Hudson. You because know. you weren't yet. Uh, uh, um, uh, a member of the new school. No, well, right. I was before, right? Because yeah, I was right. on a fellowship. Right. And then I went to Bart, and then, and th th that's right. No, right. but I, I, I did know about it, of course, and I wanted to be, but it just didn't, right. didn't work that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so the reason why um, um, the event is particularly remembered uh, around Adam Michnik was because he couldn't go to, like Elzbieta, he couldn't go to the event. Uh, uh, but he couldn't go to the event, not because he was teaching at Bard, but because he was in prison. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so in his stead, uh, um, uh, Czesław Miłosz, the Polish Nobel Prize winning poet, uh, uh, accepted the degree uh, uh, for Adam and read uh, Adam's famous letter from prison uh, to General Kishchak. Okay. Well, now, it is now uh, famous, but no, no, of course, then, it was fresh I, letter, right? No, it, it, it became famous beyond Poland, particularly because of this event. <laughs> so, right, so, right. so it was a very dramatic uh, uh, moment with Miłosz reading 
uh, eloquently, uh, um, uh, Meethnik's eloquent uh, letter. And um, it was so striking, apparently there was a New York Times uh, reporter there, that it was reported with an image of the event uh, on the front page of the New York Times the next day. And meanwhile, so, with all those, you know, regalia of right. the of the honorary right. degree with the with the hat and with the cape and everything, was really dramatically reading a letter in which, in which, uh, Adam and it's very important. I think it's important what it was, um, in which Adam uh, written to a to the head of the uh, of the of the Secret Service, police, internal minister, uh, minister of internal affairs in Poland, who offered to Adam, a tr you know, you know, maybe you'd like to leave Poland, you know, you, you would be more comfortable than in prison, you can go to, uh, to the Côte d'Azur, you know, you, you would be so, and then he said in this letter, and that's, I think, that the, 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 the was in this New York Times article, um, one has, one has to be a pig to offer me something like that, to offer me that, to offer, you know, to, it was uh, it was yeah, it was striking. It, it, it was powerful. And yeah, it, and, and it, and it was it was really amazing. And, and everyone at the event knew that something very special had happened. And um, so I was there. And uh, uh, because Alberto wasn't yet uh, a full time member of the, uh, of NSSR, uh, I was assigned to be uh, Czesław Miłosz's host for the day. And uh, and which was you see this is why yes yeah, this is incre right. incredibly thrilling mm -hmm. and and, and uh, I remember walking out and I was next to the dean of, of the, uh, the, uh, the the graduate faculty then uh, Ira Katz Nelson and and we were just all astonished with what had happened and and I said to him Ira now we have to make this real because because what had actually happened was. The, the kind of normative principles, the ideals that are at the very center of the New School project, not only the University in Exile, but, but the, the, the New School of 1919, for a moment seemed like an absolute reality. And there seemed to be no distance between the, the kind of what happened in that event and the idea of the New School. So uh, why won't you go to exile? Ask and and, 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 and I, I, I turned to Ira and I said, we have to make this real. And, and um, you know, one thing led to another. And then in December of, uh, of 1984, um, the new school was being celebrated by the city of Berlin uh, and gave uh, von Weisseke an honorary degree. Again, because of the university Again, in exile. Yeah. A similar event now in Berlin. Uh, a notable moment was when Jürgen, during that event, when Jürgen Habermas spoke and he thanked the new school for, keep, for uh, 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 making it possible for German social science to live, an independent ger German social science to live. So, in, so yeah. in exile. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, uh, uh, and and uh, uh, so Jonathan Fanton, the president of the New School, I, I was a recently tenured faculty member, um, and um, you know not a key figure at all in, in, at the New School at that time. But but Jonathan Fanton asked me to join the the, the group that w went to Berlin, and then to go on. Which is a small, which was a small group, right? It was right? a small group. It, it, it was, you know, maybe a dozen people, something, something uh -huh. like dozen. that. But not, not, not tiny, not tiny. Oh, okay, uh, I thought it was uh, just four people or so. Yeah, and Ari Zolberg actually uh, was the featured speaker. And I think it, it was at the moment that he became the university in exile professor. Uh, and, um, but then I, I was charged with going, going ahead after being in Berlin and um, of course, we did the work before, but we set up a, uh, a, a unofficial meeting uh, in uh, Warsaw to actually give Michnik his degree personally, because he had since been released from prison. 
But the group that went to Warsaw was much smaller. But the, the group that went to Warsaw was, was, was actually Jonathan Fanton, um, um, DeWind, uh, Adrian DeWind, his wife, and, and me. Uh, on the, um, the, uh, Adrian, Adrian DeWind, DeWind was a member, uh, member of the board. Uh, and and um, so, so uh, I left early from Berlin, went to Warsaw. I had, uh, with Elzebeta's help and, and help of people at Human Rights Watch, I think, uh, I had kind Helsinki of watch. Helsinki. Uh, Helsinki watch Helsinki yeah. watch then uh, uh, I, I um, kind of uh, made contact with the opposition in Poland this, and there was an underground uh, ceremony in a private apartment by uh, apartment of a famous uh, economics professor who was I think 95 years old, uh, uh, Edvard Lipinski. No, yes, yes Edvard, yes, yes. Edvard yes. Lipinski, who at one point was a communist and then uh, 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 you know, joined the Communist Party after being a socialist and then uh, uh, was a, a privileged person, this is important. To, uh, so he had a very, very nice apartment. And not only did he have a very nice apartment, the apartment, uh, uh, the paintings in the apartment were act, were, were uh, uh, essentially a, a, another gallery of the National Museum. Just extraordinary paintings that, that he had. Uh, uh, and it was a real mark of privilege. But, but he, also he was but, very well known scholar even before the before the war. So it was a, right, you know, it, right. it was a, yeah, was a, a person who- He's an old guy <laughs> and, and, and distinguished man. An distinguished man, That's and right. ironically, his apartment was across the street from the prison that Michnik uh, uh, sat in on the Rakowiecka Street. Right, right, and, and so, so uh, we had the event. Uh, uh, who's who in the uh, in the uh, underground were there? Uh, the electricity in the uh, uh, in, in the apartment was cut. So uh, uh, the light was provided by, uh, I think, a Swedish television. No, no. So the, Jonathan Phantom describes it. It's actually worth it to know that, that there, there is this book that he published, University and Civil Society. And in this book, there is a careful, thorough description of what had happened in Warsaw. The entire quarter of Warsaw, I mean, kind of a semi-district, small, mm -hmm. um, the, the electricity was turned off, not just in right, an apartment, right, 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 but right, apartment. Right, right. Um, it, you know, it, they, they were just trying to paralyze it. They were just trying to stop it. And uh, and um, then the, uh, Jonathan said that, and I do remember that there was a, a correspondence from Warsaw by NBC News. I, and I, NBC News- I, better, I think he may be mistaken about that, but who knows? Yeah. Uh, Right. But anyway, there was a television crew that had the lights to 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 uh, film the generate and, and and it was their their lighting that uh, that illuminated uh, the meeting and the gallery <laughs> at the gallery. And, and uh, you know, I have to say that uh, the, the uh, board member, the president, uh, uh, the board member's wife, they they were all very, very impressed by the gallery, you know, <laughs> the, the, this, and, and it, it's significant because it told you that we were going to see criminals, you know, pe people who were uh, uh, persecuted. Uh, uh, and you know, criminals, uh, according to the government. They according to the violence. government. Mm -hmm. But in fact, we were seeing the leadership of the country. And they became, and they later became, so, uh, one more, th I could describe that day in great detail, but we'll, if I, we do this, we'll never get to the <laughs> democracy seminar. So, so uh, you know, one thing to note is that afterwards we went to uh, uh, have dinner, uh, uh, a lunch at uh, a fancy hotel. And uh, I went there, you know, the new school uh, delegation went there. Uh, 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 Garamek was there. Yatsek, so, yeah, Yatsek, 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 Yats
where people knew who they were. A, a good number of people knew who they were. And there we were. And, and I have to say, it was a moment that I was proud of my Polish. My Polish was working. I was the translator. And, 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 uh, and we just had a normal dinner after a, uh, um, um, you know, a, a, a university event, uh, you know, uh, and the normality of it was a stark contrast to the reality which was there, which was that any moment we could have been expelled from the country, at any moment uh, they, they, they could, all of them were in prison recently, at any moment they could be imprisoned again. Uh, they were imprisoned again after this event. I'm not sure about Geremek, but Koron and, and Michnik were. Oh, Geremek, Geremek was uh, imprisoned earlier. Um, he was they, were all, they were all during the imprisoned before, during mar was. martial law. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, th these are really, really great uh, um, distinguished people. Uh, so, so that Jack, was great. Jack, just to know, just so you know, uh, Bronisław Geremek, who after 1989 became the foreign minister of Poland and was incredible. He was later on in the European Union, in the parliament and so on. He was a medieval historian of an extraordinary, extraordinary kind of subtle, uh, mm, his works were actually mostly located in France. He was a very cosmopolitan person and very kind of open-minded. So and those were people who actually helped to create solidarity. And they, the reason that they were known, Jeff, when you went to this, to this hotel, to Victoria, is actually because it was three years after solidarity period, after the 16 years of uh, months of solidarity, 16 months of solidarity. And they were on television all the time on the radio. Prior of that, nobody would have known who is who because and, and they, they were not known, in public space. They were known, but not that well known by uh, ordinary folks. You know uh, uh, that I know because I I moved around Warsaw for the, the the week that followed. Uh, Michnik spent Michnik and I spent all our time together from morning to night. He introduced me to all sorts of people. Uh, and the last person he, he, he uh, introduced me to was a man by the name of Jan Yusef Lipsky, who couldn't attend the event because he had a heart condition and he was actually in a cardiac, you know, special heart surgery hospital on the outskirts of Warsaw. Now I'm saying this because it was leaving the visit with Lipsky that Adam had the idea of the democracy seminar after the week that we were together. And essentially one of the things we did was we, we talked about, you know, as what was going on ar around the world. And, um, you know, in, interestingly uh, about an essay that uh, uh, Adam wrote in support of Chilean, Chilean copy, copper miner uh, strikers, workers, unions, against uh, Pinochet, the, the Latin American dictator, a letter, a, a, a piece that he wrote that was controversial for some people in the underground because it was uh, perhaps a communist uh, uh, union. Uh, uh, certainly it was a union working against an avowed anti-communist. And uh, at that time, uh, um, you know, the, the kind of distinct position that political position that we shared with each other uh, became very, very clear to, to, our, to us. And we also spoke about friends in various places who had similar sensibilities. So it included Janusz Kish and uh, uh, Georgi Benza in uh, Budapest, Václav Havel in uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, and really many other people that, you know, uh, my colleagues uh, uh, at the New School, Elish uh, Beta, um, um, Andrew uh, Fairhair, uh, Andrew Arado, uh, so the, Agnes, the, you know, Heller. Mm -hmm. Agnes Heller. And so as we were leaving the hospital, Adam said, Jeff, we should actually have a seminar among our friends. 
to talk about issues of mutual concern. And we had also spent a lot of time speaking about authors. You know, this is what people like us do, you know, books that we really appreciate. And, um, and we spent a lot of time talking about Hannah Arendt and a lot of time talking about the book, The Origins of Totalitarianism. So we should have a seminar. In so let me just let me just add something here because it's um, I wasn't sure where he when he actually suggested it's inc it's interesting that it was after the visit to the to, to see Lipsky in the hospital. But I have a question to you before you go uh, one step further. At that at that event, big event, which was also later on a party, right? At Lipsky, Adam gave a lecture. Yes, so, so, so that, that, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, Lipinski and, and Lipsky. So at Lipinski's, uh, he did in fact give a lecture. A, a, the reason and, that I'm asking, because I yes. think he gave a lecture in Polish though, right? Yes, 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 it would be in Polish. <laughs> and, and then they, and I, I don't think I translated, uh, someone else would have translated it. for them. So, so uh, the reason I'm asking is because there was something that I found in that lecture later on that he gave, which I used, I used in, uh, at some point in my book, but this is what he said. It was the suspicious, suspicious people who created the new quality out of small group of friends, comma, and a few communities of ideas from private seminars, and primitive printing equipment, a social movement began. Right, right. New quality, people who created the new quality. So, so now's the time where I have to say that my friend Elzbeta Matinya, uh, uh, at the beginning of this movement, uh, lived in Poland, uh, and uh, all sorts of people kept a lot, you know, attended these meetings, but also provided. Uh, uh, a good term for this week, the infrastructure for uh, uh, independent publishing. They kind of moved materials for, for you know, th th they got uh, access to duplicating, duplication machinery, which could be very, very primitive, uh, or it could be rather advanced, but in, in official institutions, but using official institutions to kind of produce uh, underground texts that, uh, um, uh, you know, we're certainly not, uh, uh, it certainly wasn't supposed to happen. And paper had to move, copies of, uh, of, of uh, uh, completed uh, uh, books. Paper so bet, from Sweden, papers yeah. to, 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 have, to have a book by Czesław Miłosz, Captive Mind, a printed underground in Poland was very difficult to read. It was not very good quality, but you know, it's a kind of thick, thick thing. Um, the special fixed staples, staples had to be brought, I mean, smuggled, smuggled. You know, this is a small thing, not the big thing from, from, from Sweden, from Sweden. I, 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 you so, know, so, I, so, so you, you, uh, you used your car to, to, to move uh, uh, materials. From one I, had place a tiny to car. I had a tiny car, everybody yeah. in Poland then had, not everybody, but we had this tiny car, I have a tiny orange little Fiat. And that Fiat, somebody once asked me, um, uh, at one of those parties, you know, you have a car. So I did, we, we went, at, you know, to, on one part of, in one part of Warsaw in a little garage, people were printing it. And, um, and uh, they didn't get out of that garage for seven days until they finished printing it. And then we came and the pages were all separate, but in the black kind of trash bags, something like that, also smuggled. We didn't have those trash bags in Poland then. And then we went to a completely different part of Warsaw, so far, far away, when in three different apartments, we just gave this, they collated those things. Um, it, it, I remember, uh, I don't know, was it a month later that my car was sprayed with the uh, acid, some kind of acid, an orange car, and it began to have kind of, you know, the orange color had drops all over, white drops, it was very interesting. Color, interesting, interesting car. <laughs> so, 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 so uh, you know, if, if um, uh, people who know me know that what Meath me wrote about and talked about in that lecture uh, um, 
has something to do with my idea about the politics of small things, uh, as does this, the democracy seminar itself. That it's just was a little meeting among friends with, with, uh, who, had, who had shared ideas and shared concerns, uh, trying to understand their world together. And, and d doing it together was uh, at that point extraordinarily difficult. So Mithnik at that moment turned to me and said, let's do one of the, these things together between um, uh, um, Budapest, uh, Prague, uh, Warsaw, and New York. And that's actually, that was the beginning of the democracy seminar. Um, and uh, and the, the first years of the democracy seminar, which involved intermittent, intermittent meetings, um, you know, uh, Jack, you have seen uh, some of the documents from that time that are in fact in my papers. Uh, and um, uh, they were, um, you know, 10, 20 of us at the new school would get together uh, in a seminar room, perhaps most often in the Wolf Conference, what was then the Wolf Conference room and on uh, 65 Fifth Avenue, uh, uh, the building that preceded the university center. And uh, we would talk about um, uh, Marx and morality, uh, 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 Michael Walser's ideas about social justice, and, and really crucially about uh, Hannah Arendt's uh, book, uh, The Origins of Totalitarianism. And similar meetings were held in Warsaw uh, and Budapest. It never really took off in this uh, pre-1989 uh, um, uh, uh, in Prague. Because it was, they were much more repressed. It was, right. you know. Yeah, it was much more difficult. So, you know, uh, Poland and Hungary had uh, more vibrant uh, democratic oppositions and the regimes um, were um, less repressive. Uh, not, I think it's also uh, fair to say it's not only that the regimes were less repressive, but the opposition forces were stronger. You know, so. So, so, so Michnik remembers that. He that those were so meetings in the following way, and this is my translation. In apartments filled with cigarette smoke, in illegal self-education groups, we argued endlessly about everything. On the phenomenon of totalitarianism, on the conditions of an intellectual caught up in politics, on what it meant to be a Jew after the Holocaust, on the dynamics of the internal transformation of the communist system, on parliamentary democracy and the market economy, and on the process of transformation of the communist dictatorship that would itself be full of traps and new dangers. That, that's the, that's, that, that's so, so, so how he that, captures those meetings. It, it absolutely yeah. captures the meetings. And, 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 um, and it, I, I have to emphasize that it was a it was a small affair, you know. Uh, uh, it wasn't grand. Uh, we who were taking part in it had no uh, um, idea that we were doing something very important that would have lasting effects. And it was modest, yeah. And, and in fact, we weren't doing so, something so mm -hmm. important that had so many lasting lasting effects except that Meethink's description was not only of the democracy seminar, but many such meetings. And- uh, Flying and University, I, for example. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and um, the kind of significance of creating, uh, um, to use the, the language that I'm using now about uh, uh, the democracy seminar, committees of correspondence, uh, people speaking to each other and developing kind of uh, modest, uh, um, self-critical, but, uh, but provocative and radical uh, uh, ideas and discussions um, uh, ultimately contributed in a very significant way to the fall of the, the Soviet empire. But uh, those combined, oh. those were combined activities, right? Yes, yes, it absolutely. Up. But you know, it is important to remember about those 
uh, about those, um, uh, no matter how modest, other projects or projects that actually together brought it up because, uh, because, because we don't remember that anymore. And the entire period um, now in the very divided and divisive Poland, uh, but also, but also America and Europe is, uh, is, uh, you know, is, um, um, is, is being seen as a, uh, is, is tainted by the period and the and the regime of that time. In the meantime, you could not really communicate with those people. So there were letters, but the letters were not mailed. They were given to somebody to, to brought to New York so we know what they are doing. So we can send some books or something. And that in one of those letters that I had um, written to Jeff uh, by Professor Shatsky, who at some point when Adam was in prison, when right. So nobody else was available. He said, dear Jeff, this is to inform you that the first meeting of our seminar took place last month, shortly before my leaving Warsaw for Vienna, where I have been for nearly three weeks. Our first meeting was not dedicated to any specific topics. We were discussing the very idea of the seminar, trying to find a formula, which would be at the same time conformable to yours and consistent with our own interests and experiences. It seemed that such a formula has been found. We will start at the end of September with repeating your first seminars on the concept of totalitarianism, etc. Next, we plan to discuss the following topics. Ideological foundation of anti-totalitarian thought, contemporary liberalism, conservatism, etc. Two, language of contemporary politics with special consideration of question whether the traditional left-right categories are still re relevant. Three, theories of social crisis in our century. Four, social behavior in social crisis, elites and masses. Five, process of destalinization in Poland, in Germany and Czechoslovakia. Six, totalitarianism in, every, in everyday life and common sense thinking the impact of the political system and spontaneous mechanisms of defense. Seven, critical analysis of dissident thinking. Eight, opposition in Latin America. As you can see, the project is not too coherent and so on. But I, I, I wanted to read that because yeah, no, it, it's I mean, the, the interesting thing I think is that, that uh, the project is still not too I know, I know. Uh, 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 but but uh, worth doing. And I, I think it's it's interesting because to kind of hear Shotsky's voice yeah. uh, in that, because in, indeed what happened is that I went to Poland, I was with Michnik, uh, 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 you know, we were went to Poland, we were with Michnik, and then a few months later, he was uh, arrested again and charged with treason. <laughs> and... Uh, um, and then I think it was in the April of, uh, of the next year in 1985, uh, I went to Gdansk where he was on trial and, and attempted to, um, uh, um, uh, you know, get, I gave him my, our support. He, he had actually written a private note to me asking me if I would come and the new school uh, board members uh, uh, backed me and made it possible for me to go there. Uh, and, um, and it was then actually when we were, he was in prison, I, we were communicating through his lawyers that uh, he proposed that I approach Shotsky, uh, who coincidentally, he didn't know this. Uh, I had a long-term relationship uh, uh, already. And it's in some ways through Shotsky that Elspeth and I met. No, 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 it was Shotsky's assistant, Mario Bervid. And, uh, but anyway, Elspeth at some point became Shotsky's assistant or, or yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like I, yeah. I was. I. I. Uh, I uh, he was my. He was. He was advisor. He was an amazing sociologist. I'm so happy that we can actually say it. Say right. something yeah, about sure. him. Extraordinary historian of ideas, and not just that. In the last. In the last um, paragraph of that letter, Jeff, to you, that I translated and put it in the book on democracy seminars, he said, "A word about members of our seminar." 
uh, 14 people who took part in the first meeting belong mostly to Kritika group. That was the journal that uh, Adam Nichnik um, edited and which first, uh, which, which published uh, um, Václav Havel's Power of Powerless. Adam commissioned it at Havel and first it appeared in Polish because it wouldn't be possible to have it in Czech. So mostly Kritika group, but there will be others. We are really interested in having a diversity of views. It goes without saying that everybody represents only himself. Right. Uh, well, I, I was about to say, um, we're almost, we're sort of talking about 1985 and Nifnik returning to prison. Um, in 1986, so, Elzbeta, you're hired by the New School, correct? I don't remember actually when, but, yeah. uh, but, uh, but uh, probably. He, he, he's looking at the record, so, so oh, it's pro okay, it probably okay, right. Okay, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, probably. So in 88, though, I, have a, I, I found another letter, Jack, um, uh, written by Georgi Bense from Budapest, and listen to that. I mean, I'm looking at it, you know, listening to, the, I mean, to seeing it right now in front of my eyes. It's really rather extraordinary and dramatic. Dear Jeff, I'm using a good opportunity to send you the first five documents of the Budapest branch, or rather, should. Budapest should. You know, good opportunity, what that mean? It just somebody brought that letter. Right. It could not be, you know, otherwise, it's Budapest, March 5th, 1988. Docu document six is in the works. Um, it will give a longer summary of the discussions of the last three sessions dealing with the problems raised by, the, by O'Donnell, Schmitter, et al. Texts on democratic transitions. Now, it's 88. A year from now, from 88, from March 5th, uh, 5th 1988, in Poland, there will be already a round table discussion um, debating and, and, uh, and negotiating how to end communism. So he says the, the following, it would be helpful to see more summaries of the other branches. Up to now, we'll have got the following, the first three Warsaw sessions, the New York sessions till Shapiro on China. And the, right. the final thing, we, we would be glad to hear about the planned meeting in Warsaw. The only piece of information transmitted by Harasti. Now, Harasti was at the, briefly in New York at the New School on the Soros Foundation. Harasti, uh, Miklos Harasti, uh, um, 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 uh, a sociologist, or political thinker, but also later on the, 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 the member of the first democratically elected parliament in, in Hungary. So the first uh, only piece of information transmitted <laughs> by Harasti that reached us is that it will take place in May. So in other words, the two oppositions were planning to meet in Warsaw in May 1988. What about agenda, accommodations, travel arrangements? Please try to write to my home address. Home right, address. Right. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. That that's the way it was. I mean, you know, if we're going to think about this project, uh, uh, it's on the one hand very, very different than what we're. we're I, I want to say it's very, very different from our present circumstances in a number of different ways. One is uh, that there was no internet. <laughs> Uh, there were no faxes. No email. There are no faxes. Yet we even. hardly could call. We and, could not call and, anybody. Yeah, and I, I actually remember the time when I, it, a few years before, when I lived in Poland, I'd have to order a telephone call a week in advance, and if it went through, uh, uh, I'd be lucky. And and it's a combination of two things. It's it, it, it's the technology, but it's also uh, the very real political repression, the very real uh, um, kind of divide, uh, wall, iron curtain, one might even say, uh, that, that divided us. Um, so, so, that, uh, so there was a political dimension uh, as well. Um, the, 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 what was unusual about the group is that on both sides of the divide, the geopolitical divide, uh, people shared a common identity, a co common kind of set of ideas that when I heard, uh, uh, you know, when I hear now Shotsky's description of what the project was in Warsaw, uh, it was uh, almost identical to what we were thinking. You know, the, the, uh, we, we share, despite the, the technological and the political divisions 
that that's, uh, divides that separated us, uh, we did really have this common concern, but very crucially, we were in very, very different situations. You know, that essentially we were uh, critics from the left of actually existing capitalism, actually existing liberal democracy. At the same time, we appreciated what was very valuable about liberal democracy. Uh, and we recognized that we had a certain capacity to act freely together, uh, which uh, had to be fought for um, uh, with great ferocity and determination on the part of our friends on the other side of the divide. Uh, and even though we were crit critics of actually existing democracy in America, in Western Europe, in Australia, uh, we realized that we were, in, in our discussions, we were in the, the privileged sector. Uh, we were in, a, um, uh, if, if the concern was with totalitarianism, it would be an exaggeration to say that we were uh, faced an, ex, uh, an equivalent threat. Uh, we were in different situations. And a, a very important part of it was that we uh, uh, worked with our colleagues in the East. Uh, uh, we didn't think that we were bringing wisdom to them. Oh, we learned from that. Hello. No? Our co my colleagues from Budapest, Prague, and Warsaw were my teachers, more my teachers than the professors I studied with. Uh, so, so there was, there was an egalit, you know, we were equals. We, we, we took each other seriously. We learned from each other, uh, but we were in different situations. Now, the major uh, impetus, stimulus for reconstituting the democracy seminar is because now we're all facing the same problem. And, and the, the divides don't, you know, it's, it's you know, of course, we're all still in, uh, you know, people in Brazil are in different circumstances and people in Hungary or in different circumstances and people in Turkey in, in the United States. But there's a sense in which we're fa all facing um, um, a similar authoritarian threat or an authority, a, a, a new authoritarianism, which has uh, 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 which is a kind of disease, kind of virus with multiple variants, and and uh, and we have and, and we're working actually to um, together uh, in similar situations uh, to, to to try to to uh, struggle against this. Uh, so, um, in some ways there was a complementarity of problems that existed there, but they were strikingly different. Now there's a complementarity of a problem that we're all experiencing together. And it, that's what led to uh, the, the rebirth of the democracy seminar. But Jeff, so I have a question, and I'm sure that Jack wants to ask a question, so maybe I should ask you to tell the, ask a question, but I'm listening with great attention to what you are saying, and obviously um, this is something that we all feel here because, you know, and, and they all feel there. You said before that when we were starting it, we learned from each other, but the situation was different. We were in a different situations situation do you do you think that that kind of dissent or i should say well the dissidents mm -hmm. that we need dissidents today or is this something that belongs already to the to the to the other era just mm -hmm. era without uh, internet, this and that, and without faxes, without, without possibility to move in, in space and, and time quickly. Well, you know, um, I don't know, you know, there, we work with dissidents. We work with yeah, dissidents. Yeah, right? we work with people who were dissidents, but who at that moment didn't call themselves dissidents. They were called dissidents by 
uh, outside observers. Most of them, as I recall, and you can correct me, Elspeth, thought of themselves as democratic oppositionists. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, no, that I, was. But but there was no no. I absolutely agree. I you know when I'm thinking, for example, about the members of Hungarian group, mm -hmm. which was a very interesting group with uh, with with Janusz Kish and and Bence, but also with Georgi Konrad. Yes. Uh, Georgi Konrad. You know, a brilliant writer and and essayist and uh, really original member of the of the Budapest um, uh, Democracy Seminar wrote a piece, a very interesting piece about something about the melancholy of rebirth or something. And and he said and he said something here, and I think that that really shows that they never thought about themselves, or maybe at that point not anymore. And that was 1989 when he wrote that. This year, people living all over Central Europe came to the realization that communism is less satisfactory a form of government than democracy. What is more, they felt strong enough to act on it. Yeah. They have intimate knowledge of dictatorships of the right and left and were fed up with both varieties. And suddenly the influence of the dissident movements reached the critical mass that sent them into the streets to take their own over take over their own public space. So, so I think that um, uh, that's a really interesting passage mm -hmm. uh, because they, they had uh, the idea that they disdained uh, uh, dictatorships from the left and the right yeah. and the ideologies of the left and the right. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're not conservative or progressive. But it, it it's a, a kind of dogmatic progressivism and, and a dogmatic yeah. uh, conservatism, uh, authoritarianism that um, uh, uh, Conrad identified as being their shared sensibility. I think that that same shared sensibility is pressingly needed right now, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, um, because even though most of the clear and present danger in our countries uh, um, come from the right now, uh, um, with one or two exceptions coming from the left, the dangers of this type of dogmatism is uh, very much comes from uh, uh, multiple political perspectives. And uh, the, the, the kind of insight that uh, you know, democracy without any adjectives uh, uh, um, it, it, it is a primary goal end in itself mm -hmm. is actually what uh, um, kind of was the shared sensibility of, uh, of the participants of the democracy seminar. And, uh, and I think the people who are taking part uh, uh, kind of, move around that shared sensibility right now and that it's pressingly needed. Uh, uh, so, um, you know, I don't think that, um, you know, Antifa is a serious threat to democracy in America. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, but on the other hand, uh, uh, the, the, um, um, the ideas behind Antifa, uh, I think, uh, uh, are dangerous, uh, and um, and kind of critically appraising uh, this uh, kind of political dogmatism from left and right and center, uh, um, uh, a kind of magical. I, I thought that in 1989, a certain type of magical thinking thinking had uh, uh, finally died. That you, we political actors in the world globally have learned that both fascism and Nazism and uh, uh, Bolshevism and communism uh, uh, ended in uh, tragedy and suffering and that we wouldn't repeat that any longer. I actually want to go back to chronology for a minute because I think that that uh, there's a time where the democracy seminar, where I played a leading role in the democracy seminar, where where uh, in my kind of 
scattered, uh, um, um, kind of informal way. But, but there's, there was a time when we made a transition from uh, a, 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 a group, a small group of colleagues in a discrete number of countries, let's say uh, three and a half, Poland, Hungary, the United States, and there were intermittent connections to Czechoslovakia. Uh, after 1989, uh, uh, the democracy seminar had another life. And the situation changed. The situation like, obviously had changed. Uh, so, uh, situation the situation had changed now. profoundly. And we can't just think about what it was before 1989 and now, because in between, there was this period where the democracy, democracy seminars spread throughout East Central Europe and the former Soviet oh. Union. And, and I, was about to, I was about to play a major role in that. Lala, could you put them, um, uh, because the, the screen sharing is disabled, but I have a list of names that would be interesting because it's just what Jeff was talking. Could you, could you, un you can share now. I can share now. Okay, thank you. I think I. And, and Jack, had, Jack had a question. I, I was just going to say. <laughs> Go ahead. Previously, we, we talked about uh, that letter from March 1988 um, from Hungary. I thought it was interesting that that was the first time you'd heard about their actual seminars. Um, one month later, the strikes start in Poland. Yeah. I, I was curious how that was received in New York. In 1988? Yeah, yes. in April 1988, the uh, solidarity strikes. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be second round. Yes, so, so the, the, let's, we're sharing this. So let's just know these are the contributors to a volume called uh, Grappling uh, with Democracy. Uh, uh, you know, the title says it all. And then the authors are uh, uh, people who took part in the discussions of the democracy seminar. From the uh, mostly, no, but no, everybody is here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, not everybody, but a lot of people. A yeah. lot of people are here, right. So, so when we come to that, uh, to that chronology, 1988, <laughs> The, the democratic opposition in Poland had a, had a kind of a, a tacit okay agreement with the regime that the um, round table will start actually in 1988. And the reason that it didn't, those strikes, those strikes were to actually force it. And eventually they did make a big difference. You see, intellectuals alone were not able, you know, you need a large social movement. You, you need, in this case, incredibly legitimate workers' movement in the work in the in the country, which is the country, you know, the working class. Um, that movement played extraordinary role, and those strikes were there. And then there was summer, and in the fall, the preparations for the roundtable start and began. It's um, and you know, when we are talking around the table, we are talking around here, actually that the enemies are meeting each other, right? The enemies are meeting each other. And they are taught, you know, people who, who kept them in prison are now sitting at the other side of the table. So it was a major, major, major move. For me, it is still one of the most extraordinary, um, now that obviously it was an invention, but at that time it gave it, it became this, this, this idiom of, of, um, of ending dictatorship nonviolently. So here you have the names, right? And that's really, and it's, um, so I wanted to show something else here. Um, I, I was looking at it quite recently. Unfortunately, I don't have this book here. It's in the, it's in the country, it's in the, it's in my office, I think. I have it. But yeah, you do. <laughs> no, it does matter. I put a lot of kind of work into it, and I think it's extraordinary. This is a document of kind of 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 um, if you can say free free thought, liberated thought, and you have people from all over and people with whom we still are in touch, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, if you if you think about it, uh, who was who was writing here and. Uh, and who was um, attending those meetings. Eva and Tosca got our Courage in Public Scholarship Award. Alex Rigorius just, is, just wrote to us that he wants to join the Democracy Seminar and he's extremely, uh, extremely, extremely, uh, you know, he, he is from, from Latvia. He's from Latvia, but he, he was a journalist for a long time in, in, uh, in, um, 
in Moscow. Uh, when I'm looking at that, you know, you, you, you know, Anstita is of course gone, has, has been gone, but she has a, a piece in this book and so does Ira Katznelson. Uh, this title that he has here, Liberalism Crooked Circle, became later a title of his book. Of his and and uh, Michnik's response to it is entitled uh, Gray is Beautiful, uh, a topic that I have been working on for the last Gray is decade. Better to right. Ira Katznelson, right? right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, we were trying to have people like from former GDR, Petra Schellenberger, a very interesting person, very young person then. Um, which were trying to, you know, they, they lost, they lost an influence on the uh, direction of the transformation because they were simply, um, sw you know, the, 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 the Bundesrepublics, you know, swallow them up. Um, Yaroslav Hritzak is a teacher of most of our, and then we had a democracy seminar there in, in, um, in, uh, in Lviv. He's the, he's the supervisor of various uh, doctoral um, projects at the, at the new school. Uh, Mar Martin Crow has a, a, a brilliant political um, thinker and uh, historian of ideas had died several months ago. And there yeah. are people I just see that I, we have, you know, I just know that's what, that's what I think. I, 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 so, so why don't you take this down now, Elizabeth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, Jack, I wanted to uh, um, hear the question. Uh, hear the yeah, question. yeah. I, I, you had a question about 1988, and I just wanted to emphasize that um, um, you know when the regime was falling, you know, you know, essentially two seconds or two minutes before the regime fell, there was no under, uh, um, sense on the part of the principles that uh, the radical transformation was imminent. Uh, you know, I, I remember very clearly being in uh, um, uh, Jacek Kurom's apartment, drinking too much vodka with them. When, and when in, Jeff? In November of 1988. Okay. And, and uh, they, you know, there were strikes, and I remember actually in that apartment, a journalist from Australia was calling, uh, uh, wanting to know what Mithnik and Koron uh, thought about the strikes and the impending debate between uh, 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 Valenza and the head of the official union. I'm forgetting his name. Uh, do you remember, Elizabeth, the head of the official union back then? It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, and they were all convinced that uh, uh, that me. Oh, that the official, uh, yes, Constant, uh, Constant. Uh, Const uh, I forgot. Yeah. Constant anyway, they, yeah. they were sure that 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 uh, um, that Valenza would lose the debate. Miadovich. Miadovich, right, 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 and and, um, uh, and and they really had no sense that that they that there was they were at the brink of a major transformation. So uh, um, really lots of work went into the change, but uh, it surprised everyone, including the principals. So uh, I, I think it's very important to emphasize that. And, and there it, it was a sense of despair. And I, I, I always remember that because uh, when I despaired since then, I'm reminded that um, uh, one has to work for hope, you know, work with, with a sense of hope because no matter how uh, 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 difficult uh, times uh, seem, um, th there's a process, we actually don't understand enough about our situation to actually rule out the possibility for change. So, so and it was, just, it was just striking then. Absolutely striking that, that, that they Sorry. were they were depressed. And I, I remember, I remember. Uh, I mean, I I think I, I remember how people felt. This is, is there something about how how this is organized that that that, that I'm now seeing only our. our uh, well, I, I was about to say this. Can we can we stop sharing the screen? Just for the sake of yeah, yeah. Stop sharing the oh. screen. Yeah. 
I'm not. Oh, you are. Sh I'm still stop sharing. I'm sorry. Sharing your, your desktop. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm not good. Uh, and not only the, the but the because the people were depressed because the, because the regime seemed to be also sure that they are that they are not going to lose even if there will be elections free elections right. that they are not going to lose they were they after after several years of huge the, uh, very repressive period of after martial law they they were sure they, they they allow people to have some private enterprises this and that and they were so arrogant that they even allowed for a public meaning public television there were only two channels in Poland debate between Wałęsa and Miodowicz, the guy who established the Solidarity Union and was the leader of the Solidarity Union and the guy who was the leader of the, of the state union, state organized union, in which nobody had anything to say but the, but the government and the- settled. And my point is that Michnik and, and Kurom actually uh, shared, were deeply concerned that, that, that uh, Wałęsa would uh, make a fool of himself. Wałęsa won. won decisively. Funny, he was he was so convincing. He was so much himself. He was, um, and suddenly, somewhat, something had happened in the public mood. And we should never underestimate the role of the way people feel about something. Yeah. I think in this country we are going through it right now with the child. Yeah. Floyd and I think we have to we have to really take it very seriously uh, and 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 this is a, a, a way of kind of of changing the the flow the changing the the directions or changing the the way we think and we are going to act it seemed back then that there were two forms of modern society one that roughly resembled the modern society that the United States was with variations around the theme throughout the world. And the other one, which roughly resembled the organization of society such as that uh, existed in the Soviet Union with variations around the world. It really, I mean, it's very hard for people to re-remember <laughs> as Toni Morrison would say, uh, uh, that it, you know, major social thinkers thought that there were these two archetypes that were going to exist side by side. And, uh, and therefore, um, the principles of this opposition, in this opposition movement really didn't have a sense that the whole type of social or order would melt away, which is what it did. And it, it melted away uh, partially thanks to the heat that they themselves had created. Uh, you know, so, so it's these intellectual dissidents, but of course, uh, as Alzheimer emphasized earlier, uh, very significantly uh, the, the trade union movement, you know, the union movement, <coughs> solidarity, workers' movement. What's really strange, really, really strange looking at it 30 years later, because it affects what had happened um, there, but also not only there, but I'm talking about there now, is that um, people somewhat, you were talking about the importance of re-remembering, not that they forgot, but they kind of erased from their minds. Um, the efforts that they themselves, various smaller, bigger organization, private, whatever, made to actually exit the system. How much, and it, this is forgotten, everything which had happened before 48. And, and, then, and then, so the story, which replaces that story of an effort, of a systematic effort, long time, long term effort, um, you know, in which 68 made a difference in Prague and Poland and everywhere and, and, in, and so on and so on, was replaced by the story that it was a miracle. It just collapsed on its own. Mm -hmm. And I think that is incredible. And it's very, it's very important, I think, to remember what that happened, but it's, it, it made a huge damage. 
to understanding the dynamics of of action of dynamics of you know of, and, and, and how people felt once they gained their agency in 1980 how they were able to you know to test the regime which turned out to be military regime for several years and so on and so on and they tested it and they but they it's gone it's forgotten i think that is one of the nobody really thinks about it and i have to think i have to say i have to think more about it myself but i think that everything which was before 89 was dark and and there were no there were no actors which led to the change and if there were any actors um they were Ronald Reagan, different. Both, they were different. Uh, 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 you know, you know, I mean, right. that's kind of story. So it would not be, uh, or I don't know, it would be Trump and not, you know, I mean, just like, yeah, so one, we have to think about it because it's a, it's something which brings about that dramatic change having to do with the um, erasures. Um, of the of the of the social and collective memory, but also have, having to do with um, with the with the stories written between the lines um, in the course of those uh, periods of transition, the first you know twenty years or so. So, Jack, we've uh, we are two uh, uh, veterans of a political struggle. I, I was tempted to say old farts, but I know that was, that would uh, uh, offend yeah. those better. <laughs> one or not the other. <laughs> so, uh, no, but you are a veteran of, of, a, of, a, political, of a political struggle. Which starts with F, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like it. Right, so, 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 so uh, we're remembering. Um, do you have any uh, uh, questions of us? Do you, it, it, uh, do you want clarification? Well, I wanted I wanted to say I think like a theme of the discussion so far that I thought it's been really interesting is um, you know so the democracy seminar before 1988 uh, obviously involves um, first world um, uh, talking about smuggling in um, things like staplers or you know like like essays and books um, but the form itself of the democracy seminar comes from 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 Mithnik and from Poland and it's it's not it's not just um, Mithnik you know it's a it's a it's a yes intellectual form that, that was sort of common to that. So there is, I, I think, something nice about how, um, uh, like, like a way of inquiry or intellectual form that sort of formed in these quite specific conditions still seemed to function productively and well in New York, right? Right. Um, but if I, I was thinking maybe now is a good time to sort of uh, start talking about what happens after 1989. Um, did we, uh, when did, so uh, what's today the, the TCDS, right? The Trans-Regional Center for Democratic Studies comes out of um, the Eastern Central Europe program, which I think right. starts right, at right. this point, right? Can we, can we say a bit about that? Yeah, it was kind of, a, so I, I was a director of the Eastern Central Europe program and after, and which actually came into being really in 1989. And, and, it, and it was able to come into being in 1989 because of the history that we had in the region because of all of that that Jeff was talking here about and we mentioned. So, 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 so we had those people there that we knew and we love and we trusted and they had us here. It's just that they became incredibly busy in build, building their, you know, their, their new order. Um, and we kind of understood that, but also we, we did understand that they need to be in kind of conversation with the outside world. And that's why the, the seminar became one of the projects, an important project of the, of the Eastern Central Europe program. So, so, so let, me, let me just uh, uh, intervene here because it, I think it's interesting. One of the members uh, of, of the new democracy sem seminar is uh, from Argentina. His name is Enrico uh, Parasotti. And uh, he was uh, Ferenc Fairhair's uh, 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 assistant. And in his memory, uh, Ferenc was a key figure in the democracy seminar, uh, and he was, that's not, he's not mistaken. Uh, and, and Ferenc played a major role in uh, coordinating the first open meeting of the democracy seminar participants in Budapest. 
in uh, 1990, in the spring of 1990. So that's right, so, right. They, they, and, and, and the very, very interesting thing about that meeting was that we went there thinking that this was the first open meeting of the democracy seminar. Uh, the hung, many of our Hungarian hosts uh, uh, thought that this was the end of the democracy seminar. Mm -hmm. That, that, that uh, we were meeting, we could meet each other, and then now we have important business to do uh, in creating, an uh, um, institution building. And uh, who has time for uh, uh, such an intellectual pastime? I'll add a personal note that the idea is that we don't have time for this sort of thing. Uh, I could translate into, we don't have time to be intellectuals, we need to be politicians and policy makers. And it led to the writing of my book, Civility and Subversion, The Intellectual and Democratic Society. Because I was rather convinced that we still need such discussions. Uh, and but it didn't matter what I thought. Uh, uh, the participants, especially from the neighborhood that weren't primarily involved back then in the late 1980s insisted that we, can, that we continue the democracy seminar. So, so th there was a different perception, the people in New York, the people in Budapest, but the people from Belgrade and Riga uh, and Slovakia. And Bucharest. And Bucharest. And Sofia. Exactly. They said, no, uh, uh, we Prague. need this. And, and it was that uh, insistence that led to an expanded democracy seminar that, and led to uh, a kind of understanding that, the, the, there needs to, that this needs to be institutionalized. And it was at that point that Jonathan Fanton realized that we needed to actually create a structure for this. And that was the Central Europe program and he hired Elspeta to direct it. That, that, and, and the second kind of life of the democracy seminar uh, uh, was in the democracy seminars, but then also the creation of this East Central Europe program, which eventually led to the creation as we kind of expanded the geography of it to the Trans-Regional Center for Democratic Studies. And just to, just to add to that a little bit and, and, um, um, and, and to say what had happened, how the tra transition from ESEP, Eastern Central Europe Program, to TCDS, trans Center for Democratic Studies, happened is that we began to have people who were either young scholars, very young scholars, the beginning of their academic careers, um, or people who were doing their PhDs in those countries and, 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 um, and studying stuff that had no literature or no translations um, in their own languages. We, we, uh, we managed to get scholarships for them and they came for a year, it was called democracy scholarships. And we had a lot of people who came and said, you know, but we are really interested in Latin America. We are really interested in Latin America. And look, in the meantime, things were moving. So, um, Sub-Saharan Africa, there were various movements, you know, which was in the turmoil throughout the entire Cold War, um, began to kind of emerge. And uh, with, with the, you know, rainbow democracy in, in South Africa itself. So we just felt, and frankly, I myself was much more interested in, in bring, you know, having a larger conversation. So, so we thought that we will be working with people, whoever is interested in, in, in democracy, in the in you know in, in analyzing it, in criticizing it, in trying to explore it, that's what we are going to do. And for much younger people, so 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 that's that's the direction that uh, that we took. It actually quite took quite a while because I didn't feel like changing the name. But but um, and then we had and but very early on we established this Democracy and Diversity Institute. And for this to this institute, we invited people from all over, and that was the Kind of testing ground for that for the for the for the trans transformation to TCDS. Yeah. And, we, and in fact, it, it, the Democracy uh, and Diversity Institute um, was made up of people from the old, you know the region of East Central Europe and and the former Soviet bloc, um, often facilitated with uh, the support of uh, local Soros foundations in this country and that, and then also a significant portion of the students were new school students 
And then a significant portion of the new school students were from Latin America. So, okay. so, so, so uh, and Western Europe, but, but it a lot, was, always had a lot of Latin America. A lot of people from Latin America. So, so, so the, the expansion of, of the, salmon, of the um, kind of area of concern uh, didn't come from an idea that says, well, it would be a good idea if we apply this, th these, this discussion and these ideas and this research to uh, a broader part of the world that professors from the top uh, decided to do or that administrators decided to do. It actually emerged from the students who were taking. It was a generational transfer occurring and the students actually uh, played a very significant role in expanding the reach of, of the program. And then we began to invite for the, to teach or to give talks, people from those other parts of the world. So if there was a class on democracy, we had co-teachers, you know, somebody was, so, uh, we had, um, we had the, uh, the guy who later on became the head of the, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mexico, remember? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we had, and we have Shlomo Avineri from, from, from Israel. Castaneda. Yes. Yes. And and, and then we. Castaneda. 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 Right. Castaneda. And, and and then um, um, participants came from uh, South Africa, particularly Stephen Gelb and 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 uh, Shireen Hassan, and uh, uh, and one thing led to another, and we started having the Democracy and Diversity Institute in South Africa. So I think what what we should really emphasize is, and it has plenty to do with the with the current um, the, the the current version of the of the democracy seminar or installation of the democracy seminar is that whatever we do is kind of organic. It doesn't come from administration. It never did. It came. Um, it those were modest projects. We never were well funded. You know, I went and kind of. Uh, foundries for this and for that, and you know, 20,000 here, 20,000. And it is uh, because we needed what we want to do and we were convinced, but it wasn't that the money came first, the ideas came first. Yeah. And, 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 and the ideas didn't come from the heads of foundation uh, uh, program directors, but uh, it actually came from the participants. So I went to them and just said, you know, we're doing that. Are you interested? Right. <laughs> Right. Uh, well, it's not so easy as it sounds right now, but it is. Um, but I think it is something that characterizes um, most of those activities. I actually also think that that's why we survived so long. It, it's also the, <laughs> because somebody gave a grant and the grant expired and it was over. Yeah. The idea, the ideas that Nikhil and I shared that week in December of 1985, uh, 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 1984. Uh, uh, were, you know, came from, you know, what we shared were the ideas our friends were talking about. Mm -hmm. And we've stuck with that. Our circle of friends have expanded, uh, but we've been learning from each other. And, uh, you know, with some direction, but, but still learning from each other and opportunistically getting money from this organization or that to get, get things done. But the fundamental ideas that Mithnik and I were talking about there uh, uh, ha has been the kind of the the, uh, the underlying thread in all these activities, which I think animate this new version of the democracy seminar, uh, animate uh, 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 what the Transregional Center for Democratic Studies has been now for decades, and uh, uh, and. Um, and um, uh, and uh, still kind of move us forward in a way that um, um, you know so, so that our ideas and our practical activities have uh, spoken to each other in in uh, in, in very in creative ways and you know I, I think of this in terms of my own writing you know what I've been doing in my books in my articles and my creation of the public seminar or the democracy seminar is essentially just uh, 
giving uh, a, uh, an explanation of, of, of this project and, and, and uh, giving account of what I take to be its uh, political significance. What are you looking at, Oshmeta? No, I'm, I'm, no I'm, just say, I'm just saying that the, at the end, it is something that, um, you know, it's just very difficult to cut off this legacy of thinking in terms of worries. So it's a life between hope and despair, you know, um, dreams and worries, you know, and um, and I and I and that, that's why it's so sort of incredibly depressing that um, you know things that we are going through in the last year or so here, but which already percolated in other parts of the world earlier and are kind of difficult to address without addressing it together, you know, not only people in other countries, but also. And, and we need to, you know, we, we need to um, kind of analyze uh, what they are doing. Uh, the authoritarians, the dictators, uh, 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 the uh, rapacious capitalists, uh, uh, but we also need to critically account for what we have been doing. So it's my sense that uh, many of our friends um, in East Central Europe made some fundamental mistakes uh, uh, in, in uh, their relationship with the broader society and their, uh, a certain number of them uh, came to believe that um, Socialism didn't work, but uh, a, a kind of fundamentalist uh, capitalism would. Um, they, they, uh, they, there were, you know, there was not, uh, you know, I uh, thought a lot about uh, the importance of free public life. Uh, and I'm becoming convinced more and more that uh, as, uh, I don't think that that's a, a Improper concern, uh, even central concern, but I'm be becoming to real coming to realize that uh, um, a kind of radical struggle for social justice has to be uh, uh, proceed next to the radical struggle for uh, free public life. Um, so we, uh, at the same time that I I celebrate I, and I think we celebrate uh, the accomplishments we've uh, uh, we've achieved. Uh, we also, in the spirit of uh, what we do, <laughs> uh, we, we are also self-critical. So, um, uh, you know, that, that, that's something, you know, that means we're still alive. <laughs> I, I was wondering what kind of movement we have, that kind of movement that could, that did in 19... It is once the society emerged out of the of the of martial law, of what was basically a kind of a civil war. Um, what kind of movement do we have here in America around which we can all ally ourselves? And I do think we have such a movement. And it's very difficult yet to talk about it to everybody, but we have to find a way to talk about it to everybody, just as workers were fighting for their rights at that time and they were fighting on behalf of the rest of the society for a better lives for everybody. And the, the, more I, the more I get, you know, getting to know, and it's very difficult for me to know because I'm not there, I, you know, but I'm not that person, but I like to think that I can understand it. So I think that we have such a movement, it's called Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And it is about social justice, about solidarity, it's about solidarity. It's about social solidarity that we, that 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 some people in some other parts of the world, including Eastern Europe, some places like Poland, have lost, and a sense of social. They need, right, of um, of democracy being, in, in which democracy, uh, in order to to be able to be called democracy, or to have this very important concern of the other. About the I mean, that, that's certain, you know, Black Lives Matter has uh, great theoretical and practical significance. Um, and 
how the struggle for uh, racial justice in the United States in its great diversity, uh, kind of remind you that uh, um, I'm the grandfather of Asian uh, uh, grandsons, uh, um, you know, and I'm the father of a daughter. Uh, that 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 you know the way we you know th th there was something prescient about your naming our summer institute democracy and diversity. You know, uh, the, the title resonates more strongly now than it did uh, and I uh, many that, years ago. That's right. For a long time, I thought it's such an old thing, maybe we should change it. The reason that it was democracy and diversity, because neither one nor other was there. It was heavily homogenized society. Everybody look alike, thought, you know, I mean, whatever. And and it was no democracy. And then, and then at some point, somebody said, you know, but that institute in Vienna is doing democracy and difference, and you know, it has to be about difference. And you know, kind of didn't, didn't go to it. And thank God, mm -hmm. I think. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I, even naming what's, uh, what's happening in the United States and elsewhere is actually hard, naming its broad significance, but recognizing the agency, the, the kind of transformational significance of Black Lives Matter is, uh, it is actually very easy. You know, th 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 this, this is, I mean, it, 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 of course, it has a lot to do with the fact uh, that um, you know a, a fundamental con uh, contradiction of the American political experience. You know, I was gonna, if I can, I was gonna ask a question about that specifically. Um, yeah. You know, we, we talked before about um, solidarity, and you know, there's a kind of like a symbolic resonance to the irony of um, you know the fall of communism, beginning with the workers' movement, right? The Right. Uh, the, the people that ostensibly this is the government that represents better than any other kind of people. You know, it is uh, like the Workers' Party. Um, do you think this sort of irony also exists with Black Lives Matter um, in, in terms of like, like is, this, uh, is this exposing some kind of, um, uh, way in which like the, like the promise of liberal democracy is falling short in these countries? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, part of the problem, you know, what distinguished us from them, meaning we in the, in the American branch versus uh, the, 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 the uh, our colleagues in Central Europe, yeah. That, yeah. they, yeah, uh, no, no, then was uh -huh. that we had liberal democracy and they didn't. Uh, what um, the task right now, I think, is actually uh, to critical, critically appraise the limits of li liberal democracy, not to throw it away, but, but to kind of understand uh, what it has papered o over, uh, the injustices it has papered over, uh, and even facilitated. And, uh, um, and I think it's not surprising that, uh, and this is an argument that Diva Woodley makes in her uh, forthcoming book, which I had the privilege to read, it, 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 it's uh, not surprising that the, um, you know, the, I, I'm being a little cautious because I'm thinking of my grandsons, but the, the, the primary object of exploitation uh, uh, and, and injustice uh, in the United States, uh, slaves and the descendants of slaves uh, uh, play a key role in uh, uh, kind of illuminating the uh, fundamental problems in uh, actually existing democracy in America. You know, not, not democracy in America as an ideal, but democracy in America as it has uh, transpired with all its injustices. Uh, uh, so, so, so th there is, uh, it's interesting, Jack, that, that there is this kind of irony uh, uh, in this situation, which um, uh, which has poetry and 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 power, I think uh, that that we we should work with. And, and and when I think about the group, I think about uh, uh, a group of people uh, that hear this poetry. 
the irony of the workers' movement in Poland was related to the fact that the that the system called itself, you know, was run by the Polish United Workers' Party. So the Communist Party's official name was the Polish United Workers' Party. Party. Um, and we were so-called, you know, people's democracy, right? All those, all those satellite countries, yet um, people didn't have anything to do, to, to say. You could not have elections. We had elections, but there was only one party running, right? So the fact that workers who were in fact in Poland, this was a agricultural country before the war. And before that, it was really kind of late feudalism. And in 1864, we still have serfs. So peasants were very impoverished, poor, large part of the country, uneducated, and it had its repercussion in the other uh, um, dimensions in this country, became the first generation of, of, of working class in Poland after the war. We even had a sociological category, chłoporobotnicy, uh, uh, um, peasant worker. So they were living in their villages, they were coming to work in the factories, they didn't have enough uh, land to maintain themselves by the land or the taxes were so huge that it didn't work. So they were peasants, but they were workers. And you know, and, um, and uh, it took a long time actually for this class to become educated to this group of people and they did get educated. And in the 1970s already, we had a fantastic young generations of people, of, of, of people who work in the factories, industries who are very, and they made a revolution. So, so, so it was an achievement of socialism. That's that they, they, they developed the capacity it, to act. Ironically, it was. Yeah. When I'm thinking about Black Lives Matter, so there is this, so what had happened after 19, you know, what had happened when we, you know, in the last 10 years, let's say, in the part of the world that I'm originally from, um, a, a well-known historian, brilliant historian, um, said, you know, if you look at the slogan of the French Revolution, uh, liberté, égalité, fraternité, what's, what has survived out of that in Poland is perhaps liberté, but there is no fraternité and solidarity. And I think that that is, and, uh, and, and this is what was lost, uh, nobody would like, ever say, you know, but it was lost, which was captured by the movement and the need for workers to speak on behalf of everybody because obviously they had power. They had power because they were workers in the, you know, in the, not only major industries, but the regime used them as a, as a legitimized tool. But what I'm trying to say now is that, so, so, so to, to kind of unite the, dissident circles, the, the critical, uh, you know, public around the workers trade union, the workers organization was very, very important, especially those who were different workers. When I'm thinking about Black Lives Matter, no way I can make any comparison here, but I like to think that um, increasing groups of uh, Americans, American society are, are able to recognize themselves in that, in the in the in the goals of that movement and in the aims of that movement and in the claims of that movement and and in the need for solidarity social solidarity well i i, I think this is something that um, uh, needs to be worked out mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the parallels don't have to be uh, uh, um, kind of neat uh, but there's a hint of significant uh, similarities um, the uh, injustices in the United States are, uh, it seems now, much more deeply embedded, much clearly more enduring, and uh, uh, apparently more insurmountable. Uh, but I think that one of the heartening aspects of the movement is that it's proceeding as if they weren't insurmountable. Um, so Nick famous meeting saying maybe we can finish with that. We have to pretend that we live in the normal country. Right. Nothing right. can so, so, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Act as if you live in a free society and uh, as you do so, you actually constitute freedom.
act as if you uh, uh, live in a society that's uh, uh, capable of overcoming uh, white supremacy. Uh, and in the process, uh, you, you may act to actually, uh, I won't say overcome white supremacy, but significantly uh, make advances against white supremacy. This is a possibility. Um, th this is the, the, the kind of work that um, I think the tradition of the democracy seminar points to uh, in its iterations uh, as the democracy seminar, the first democracy seminar, the East Central Europe pr program, the, uh, the uh, Transregional Center for Democratic Studies. Um, I think that uh, we've been talking a long time I was going to say that this, this does seem like a, a good point to end.